If you spend long enough browsing the internet or the YouTubes, then you might get the impression that video game glitches are something... desirable. It's not too hard to see why, either. There's something incredibly addictive about a game's code being exposed in a variety of weird and often very useful ways. But that's kind of strange, isn't it? To derive so much satisfaction from a game going wrong, basically. It's all fun and games until it goes too far and gets a bit messy. Game-breaking glitches are the closest things we have to bad glitches. The kind of game corruption that you'd want to steer clear of because they tend to ruin everything without mercy. But really, they're kind of awesome to think about if you equate the discovery of glitches to a science experiment. You just bash a bunch of random things together and sometimes your save file gets deleted or other shit goes horribly wrong. That's the price you pay for fucking with a video game. Glitches have done some wonderful things when you think about it. It allows you to see a game at its base level. It allows speedruns to be completed in a fraction of the time. But all it takes is one little bit of code working out of order or in the incorrect place, and everything goes extreme. No, 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 As I was looking around to see what kinds of game-breaking glitches there are out there and the forms they take in pursuit of ending a journey prematurely, I noticed that a very large number of them achieve this through something screwy happening after you save. Effectively, an oversight in the game's programming results in an area being shut off to you or just straight up being trapped in an area that you can't escape from. In my mind, I imagine that the enterprising individual who's also a big fan of irony can probably clip through the wall or do some other ridiculous thing to sort it out. How do you solve a dangerous glitch? More glitches, baby, I don't know. So The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword spent a very long time in development, and I think most of that time was spent making the game as linear as physically possible. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but it does put a greater emphasis on when the game does remove this restriction, allows you to do a bit of free roaming and make your own decisions. But then you fuck it up, and then you think, actually no, make decisions for me? I can't be trusted. So there's this point in Skyward Sword where you need to travel to each of the three main areas in the game in whatever order you wish for some reason. 90% of people go to the forest area first because you're looking for dragons and you already found one. She's in the forest area, please, for the love of God, go there first. Or the fire area, but there's some stupid stealth mission to do there, so forest area is then. However, should you decide to go back to the desert area and speak with this Goron and get the song from the Thunder Dragon and then speak with the Goron again before leaving the area, the events that take place in the forest and volcano areas are fucking cancelled. I mean, that's not such a bad thing because I kind of hate this part of the game, but you can't continue any further and get to the more interesting things that come after. No idea why sandwiching a quest with two separate sessions of Goron chit chat completely breaks down this part of the game, but Nintendo did acknowledge it fairly quickly, offering to fix the corrupted save data through downloading a dedicated channel on the Wii menu to fix this issue. Honestly, getting this far into Skyward Sword only to be told to start again from scratch? That's gotta hurt. Not as much as the stupid fucking stealth section, though. Maybe it's a blessing in disguise. Having played a certain game recently that alters your game files while you play it in order to break the fourth wall in a tremendously creepy and invasive way, I've become slightly obsessed with other games doing the same kind of thing. It's one thing to have a game acknowledge the player and press up against a very fragile fourth wall, but when it recognises specific data on a console or on your computer's hard drive, then it has the capacity to freak you out beyond belief. It's like Psycho Mantis listing off the save data on your memory card or any horror game quitting to the console or desktop menu. It blows your mind in a thematically horrifying way. Especially if you do it accidentally. Somehow. Before they were giving the Xbox's library some value and cheating Destiny 2 players out of experience, Bungie were making a tactics game called Myth for the computers. You don't have to build resources like other games in the same genre, you're just given an army to command and BOOM! Hours of fun. Apparently it's quite good, but I've never played it, so it could be dog shit for all I know. But the second game is infamous for having a little problem associated with it if you install it in the wrong place. 
On the day that Myth 2 was shipped to stores, Bungie were made aware of a problem with removing the game if Myth 2 had been installed in any other directory. The uninstaller would delete the folder that contains the game's files, which is assumed to be the default location. Put it anywhere else and it starts deleting some other things on your hard drive. Potentially even the whole damn thing if you installed it on the system root, the C drive. And that's quite scary. It is a glitch, and one that Bungie fixed themselves at the cost of recalling every shipped unit of the game, but holy shit. Never knew that uninstalling something could be so dangerous. I'll admit that by the time you're uninstalling Myth 2, you don't care what happens to the game itself, and you probably shouldn't consider it a game-breaking glitch, but it is a computer-breaking glitch, and I feel like that is worse, a lot worse in many different ways. I'm now waiting on the game that deliberately deletes random parts of your hard drive as a means of telling a narrative. Would that be going too far? That might be going too far. I've recently come to appreciate the artificial intelligence of random pedestrians in Grand Theft Auto games. I was recently playing GTA 5 with a bunch of mods installed, and it was only when everything was going to shit that I was looking at the pedestrians and thinking, yeah, Rockstar did some work there. Sure, you can exploit them or glitch them out beyond belief, but do you really want to? Oh, absolutely. You can't have a complex web of NPCs all going about their daily business without also promoting an uncontrollable urge to fuck with them. Grand Theft Auto is one of the very last franchises to still use cheat codes, which is just as well because open sandbox-esque worlds like these are just crying out for you to ignore the main missions and spend some time screwing around. I remember there was a cheat in San Andreas that turned the busy seats into a goddamn war zone because a simple combination of button presses causes all of the pedestrians in the game to beat the shit out of each other. I gotta say, it is quite a lot of fun to drive around Los Santos and witness the chaos unfolding in front of you like some kind of zombie apocalypse. Kinda makes me wish they brought it back for other games, but there's a very clear reason why they didn't. So the pedestrian riot cheat overrides their AI with overwhelming violence, which is wonderful and hilarious as a part of normal gameplay, but the source of a game-breaking glitch when applied to the wrong mission. The Mad Dog mission sees you attempt to save a former rapper from jumping off a casino and killing himself. You're given just enough time to steal a nearby pickup truck full of boxes and create a somewhat soft landing for Mad Dog before you then drive him to the hospital and leave him with some paramedics. That's how it's supposed to go, but if you're using the pedestrian riot cheat at this stage, or even if you've used a bunch of other cheats before this without any active at this moment, Mad Dog will- Oh... No... I mean, sure. Apparently, the pedestrian riot cheat or the existence of other cheats overwrite whatever keeps Mad Dog on that roof. And so you have this wonderful couple of seconds where you're given an objective to save this man's life only for him to plummet to his death like a second afterwards. There is no conventional way around this other than to start again since the mission will always end this way, but I've heard that maybe using the adrenaline cheat can help you because it slows down the time, but it's not enough. You'll only be watching him fall in slow motion, which is admittedly poetic, but not very helpful. There's a lesson about cheaters never prospering in here somewhere, I'm sure. I won't lie to you, most game-breaking glitches can be fairly dull. Certainly they're hard to appreciate when they're standing between you and any more progress in a game, but that's often as far as they go. It's like an invisible, impenetrable force field that you can't do a damn thing about. It's pretty frustrating. However, with a select number of older video games with lines of code that are potentially more vulnerable to game-breaking glitches, you can have some truly incredible things happen. I'm reminded of old NES games that developed devastating glitches from being kind of old, and I can understand that, but the first generation of Pokemon doesn't really have this problem. Mostly because everyone plays it on a virtual console or as a ROM these days. It's hard for those to deteriorate. And yet it isn't particularly hard to break this game either, but unlike a conventional game-breaking glitch, the way in which Missing Note annihilates the game's code is something that people have sought out for decades. You might be sitting at home thinking, but Rabbit Luigi, Missing No doesn't break your game, it just alters the save file, it makes it so that the Hall of Fame is messed up, and the interfaces are 
and you, you get a Pokemon like, okay, okay, maybe you're right. What I love about missing though is that it doesn't make forward progress impossible, it just makes it pointless. It's almost like a means of hacking the game or enabling cheats that renders any challenge or really any structure within the game kind of irrelevant. I'm not sure you should really be thinking about challenging for the Elite Four when there's multiple players on the same screen or when you've got way too many Master Balls. Survival might be the order of the day here. I'd like to pick up on the thread about being frustrated by a glitch breaking your game and making it impossible to finish because that brings up the chance of really bad timing. If, for example, there was a glitch in the final level of a game that made it so that you couldn't beat it, that would be very aggravating to deal with. All that time you've spent to get there, flying through, oh, so many rings and punching the air many times. It would make a man so very mad if the final level was unbeatable because of a glitch. Can you guess what game I played during my time off? I'll give you three guesses. To be fair, you can't really approach a game like Superman 64 and expect everything to go swimmingly because a bunch of bumbling fuckwits made this game. Recently, I had the wise idea to try and beat Superman 64 because that's something that not many people can say they've had the patience and lack of brain cells to commit to and who knows? Maybe there's something interesting waiting at the end of this game that I can make a video on. It could provide me with inspiration. It's a weird thought, but maybe it can. Well, you can play on easy mode, which gets rid of all the rings, which I am shocked that I didn't know about, but there's a sting in the tail here. One that hurts quite a lot. So apparently the final level isn't available unless you're playing on hard mode, which is kind of a dick move because the game defaults to normal and the only way of fixing this is by replaying the whole game again. But that's okay. That didn't break me. I'm a hardy soul, fuck you. But what I didn't factor in is a glitch that randomly kills Superman for no discernible reason. It just kept happening over and over again. To the point where apparently even a game shark can't help you here, you have reached a plane that is untouched by humanity and natural sensibilities. There is no god, and you've wasted your time. This is the Titus way. This is Luigi, and things like the existence of a game-breaking glitch in Superman 64 are what separate the bad games from the truly terrible games, because you can't even get any closure. You know, I've played 90% of this game twice, and I still couldn't beat it. I have other games I could be playing. I looked at them and thought, no, Superman 64 is the game for me. I'll beat that shit and people will be proud of me. I am not okay. Have you got an idea that you'd like me to turn to a countdown? Let me know in a comment down below and make sure you check out my Twitter or I'll be turning the best submissions into a poll where you can then decide the best topic. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.